Okay, so process mining. Maybe not the first thing that streams exciting, right? Right. Not exactly a party trick, but actually... But it's cooler than it sounds. Way cooler. Think about it. We have all this data just sitting around. Mountains of data. Exactly. And this data can show us what's really going on, not just what we think is happening. It's like you think you know how something works, and then bam, process mining hits you with the truth. Exactly. Like, sometimes you don't even know what you don't know until data reveals it. And today we're diving into a paper that's all about changing the game completely. Object-centric process mining, unraveling the fabric of real processes. By Will M. P. van der Alst. It's a bit of a brain twister. Dense, for sure, but worth it, trust us. It's gonna change how you see, well, everything. We're gonna make this easy though. No PhD required. Okay, so picture this, you're at a coffee shop. Just a normal day, right. Exactly, but behind that latte. So much is happening. It's not just you and the barista. No way, you've got the beans, the grinder, the milk, the cup. It's like a whole symphony of things working together. And each one, each piece of that process, that's an object. And each object has its own story. Where traditional process mining kind of misses that whole story. It's like listening to an orchestra, but only paying attention to one instrument. Or missing the whole point. Exactly. And this paper, it calls us out on that. Like Right off the bat, it says, quote, data extraction is time consuming and needs to be repeated when new questions emerge. Ugh. The worst. You finally get your data all perfect. And then someone asks for something else. And you have to start all over again. The data struggle is real. And then the paper says traditional methods. They try to take something that's 3D. Like our coffee shop example. Right. And they try to make it 2D. Squeezing a 3D reality into 2D event logs and models, they call it. So we're missing stuff. Big time. Nuances, details. The good stuff. Yeah. So what's the alternative? Yeah. Well, our friend Will here gives us a solution. Object-centric process mining, or OCPM. Catchy, right? And our mission, dear listener, is to make you, yes you, OCPM aware. It's about seeing the connections, the big picture. Yeah. So remember those coffee shop objects? Oh yeah, we're not letting them off the hook that easily. Imagine tracking not just the orders, but like how long each customer waits, which barista is the latte art champion. I'm telling you, some of those baristas, they're artists. Right. Or even something as simple as how many times that poor bean grinder has to work before it gets a break. It's like suddenly you have x-ray vision. You're seeing all these hidden connections. Exactly. That's the beauty of OCPM, multidimensional process understanding. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's break down the basics. What exactly do we mean by objects, events, and all these relationships? Good call. Back to the coffee shop. Oh no, not again. Just kidding. Let's do it. All right. So customer, order, barista. Those are our objects. Then we have placing an order, grinding beans, frothing milk. Those are events. So me, the customer, deciding to place an order, that link, that's our E2O relationship, event to object. Nailed it. And the beans being part of your cappuccino, that's an object to object relationship or O2O. And the paper actually shows a side-by-side -side comparison of this. Traditional event logs versus OCPM. It's a night and day difference. You go from this blurry picture to a high-def IMAX experience. With surround sound. Okay, maybe not surround sound, but you get the idea. And once you see the full picture, well, you can't unsee it. You start noticing the gaps in those traditional methods. The paper calls these gaps the convergence and divergence dilemmas. Dilemmas, huh? Sounds serious. Oh, they're serious. Like, think about it. What if you're making decisions based on bad data? We're talking about that order handling example the paper uses. Right, right. Where instead of just looking at the whole order, like one big blob, we zoom in on each item. Exactly. And this is where convergence gets us. See, traditional methods, they might count that same order like five times, once for each item. Inflated numbers. <laughs> a recipe for disaster. So then divergence, that's about. Divergence is like, okay, imagine you're so focused on the trees, you completely right. miss the forest. Been there. Got the I love trees t-shirt to prove it. Right. It's when you're looking at one type of object and you miss how it connects to the bigger process, the cause and effect, you know. So like I see a pick event, then a pack event, but I don't realize that for the same darn item. Exactly. And that little connection, that's huge. You might think those are two separate things happening, but really. It's one thing, just split into two parts. And if you don't see that, you miss bottlenecks inefficiencies. The whole plot, basically. Pretty much. So how does OCPM fix this? Is there like a magic wand involved? No magic wands, sadly. But we do have contingency tables. Contingency. Those are ring a bell. 
vaguely. Mm -hmm. It's like rows and columns, right? Yeah. Stats class, flashback. Yeah, you got it. Imagine a restaurant menu. You've got your appetizers, entrees. Don't forget dessert. Of course, always dessert. So a contingency table, it's organizing information that same way. But instead of food, it's our object types and events. Okay, I'm hungry, but I think I'm following. So in our job application example, we could have applicant application vacancy. Those would be our columns. Perfect. And then our rows would be events like submit application, screening, interview, job offer. And each little box in the table shows how those things connect. Yes. Like how many applicants, how many made it to the interview stage? It's a roadmap. But instead of streets, it's our process. Love it. And while those tables give us a good snapshot to really see how things flow, we need something more visual. That's where object-centric petri nets come in. Petri nets, hold on. Is this some kind of new social network I haven't heard about? Scientists Wait, only. Huh? I wish. No, they're not new, but they're super useful. Think of them as like flowcharts. But way cooler. Flowcharts on steroids. Basically. They show how different parts of the process, how they all interact. So instead of just seeing a list of steps in a job application, mm. we see how the applicant, the application itself. Even the vacancy. They're all moving, interacting. It's like those maps they show during election coverage with all the districts lighting up. And just like those maps, Petronets show us the hot spots, where things are moving smoothly and where the bottlenecks are. And we can use that information to, like... Optimize the process. Exactly. Figure eight in the paper, it shows a great example of this. You can see how many applications per vacancy, how many move on to the interview. It's not just guessing anymore. We're talking real data. And we can even see things like how long each step takes on average. Okay, now we're talking. That's powerful stuff. Right. And that's just the beginning. The paper even talks about using this to see, like, the average time from applying to getting a job offer. Now that's what I call work smarter, not harder. Exactly. And that's why this paper is saying, OCPM, this is the future. Like, it's not even a question anymore. Okay, but if it's so great, why isn't everyone doing it already? That's a fair point. It's just, it's a different way of thinking. Traditional methods, they've been around forever. Change is hard. Like, imagine trying to get everyone to switch back to flip phones. Oh, the horror. Right. But once you go smartphone. You never go back. And that's what OCPM is. It's that upgrade. We're taking what we know. You're leveling up. Yes. OCPM opens up all these possibilities. All right, we're back. Final round of our OCPM deep dive. Get ready, listener, because things are about to get meta. Meta indeed. We're not just talking about analyzing single processes anymore. We're going big picture. Mm. Organization wide. Think of it like this. Most organizations... Their data is a mess. Data silos. Silos, spreadsheets, random sticky notes. It's chaos. But OCPM... It brings order to the chaos. Exactly. Suddenly you can see how objects connect across different departments, systems. So no more arguing over whose definition of customer is the right one. Exactly. One source of truth. And you know what loves a good source of truth? Let me guess. LLMs. Ding, ding, ding. Large language models, those AI tools everyone's buzzing about. The ones that are going to be writing our podcast script soon. Hey, maybe. Hmm? But seriously, OCPM gives those LLMs the structured data they crave. So instead of asking, what's the weather? I could ask, what's the average time it takes to close a deal? But only for customers who used our new chatbot. And boom, you get a real answer based on solid data. Data-driven decisions. Music to my ears. It's beautiful, isn't it? Taking those broad questions and getting super specific. Laser focus. So does this mean all our old process mining knowledge? Hmm. Is it obsolete? Not obsolete. Think of it like you traded in your old car for a new one. Ooh, new car smell. All right, but you still remember how to drive. We're just shifting gears a bit, moving from those linear processes to a more interconnected way of thinking. It's like realizing the world isn't flat. It changes everything. And speaking of changing everything... The paper leaves us with a big question. A big one. What if we could analyze processes in 3D? Not just see them, but really grasp all those connections. Now that's something to think about. It is. And if you're ready to dive deeper, the paper recommends checking out osil-standard.org all the OCPM resources you could ever want. It's a whole world waiting to be explored. Because the future of process mining, it's object-centric. That's it for our deep dive into OCPM. We'll catch you next time for another exciting adventure in the world of data and processes.